Hello folks, you are welcome to our channel, and in this channel we provide you with weekly content you don't want to miss. Did you know that a giant rock from outer space wiped out the dinosaurs millions of years ago? But what if we told you that researchers have uncovered a new timeline and think they know where the asteroid came from? What's more, NASA astronomers recently made a shocking discovery about another potential impact on Earth. Could we survive such a catastrophic event? Get ready to experience the disaster that almost wiped out life completely on Earth. This is not something you want to miss, so stay tuned until the end to find out what's really going on in our universe. The giant asteroid impact into shallow waters in the Gulf of Mexico 65 million years ago was bad enough. But then, an amalgam of additional disasters ensued. Rocks fell from the sky, wildfires ignited, and tsunamis inundated distant shorelines. Now, thanks to some seriously cool tech like high-res photography and magnetic measurements, researchers have created a timeline of the day all this craziness happened. They even published it in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. They looked at hundreds of feet of rock from Chicxulub, one of the biggest impact craters ever. You won't believe the disasters that happened on that first day of the Cenozoic. It's like something out of a movie. Don't miss out on this epic story. And it all began like this. Imagine you were somewhere in North America about 65 million years ago when dinosaurs ruled the Earth and you were looking at the night sky. You would have probably seen what appeared to be a bright star shining off into the distance. But if you watch this peculiar light for an hour or two, the object would seem to grow in brightness but barely move. What you would be looking at is not a star, but a huge asteroid somewhere between 11 to 80 kilometers wide, 7 to 50 miles, on a direct intercept course with Earth at 72,420 kilometers per hour. Hours later, the asteroid plows through Earth's atmosphere, heading straight from where the Yucatan Peninsula is today. At impacts of that speed, Earth's atmosphere acts like water. Smaller space rocks called meteors hit the atmosphere like pebbles thrown into a pond, and decelerate rapidly at high altitudes burning away from the friction of the atmosphere, while some bigger pieces of rock survive the fall to Earth. But this asteroid is different. It's the size of a mountain, and it hits the Earth's atmosphere like throwing a boulder into a puddle. It maintains its velocity and plunges through the entire 60 miles of the atmosphere in just three seconds. The asteroid screams over Central America, admitting the mother of all sonic booms that shatter eardrums across the continents. The dinosaurs were likely terrified and running in all directions having no idea what was just about to happen, but if any animal was close enough to see the asteroid, they would have been instantly vaporized within minutes. In fact, except for sea turtles and crocodiles, no four-legged animal larger than 25 kilograms would survive. The mountain-sized space rock falls so quickly that the air itself cannot escape. Under intense compression, the air heats to thousands of degrees almost instantly. Before the asteroid even hits, compressed superheated air vaporizes much of the shallow sea that covers the Yucatan. Milliseconds later, the rock plunges through what's left and slams into the bedrock. In that moment, a chain reaction of events occurs. The impacting asteroid exerts so much pressure on the Earth that soil and rock flows like fluids. The flowing up and down movement of the Earth is like a double splash of someone doing a cannonball into a swimming pool. The initial splash in all directions is followed by a delayed vertical splash when the cavity created by the asteroid rebounds to the surface. The first wall of Earth gouged outward at the moment of impact is more than 32 kilometers high, 20 miles. The impact hole nearly breaches Earth's mantle, and when the cavity rebounds to form the delayed vertical splash, the Earth rises at over 1,600 kilometers per hour to heights taller than Mount Everest. Within minutes, this mountain of debris almost entirely collapses in a series of secondary explosions, leaving behind a smaller mound called a crater's peak ring. At the same moment the asteroid strikes the Yucatan and applies its pressure to the bedrock, it converts the kinetic energy of 7.5 billion ton rock traveling 16 kilometers per second into searing heat in an instant. The Chicxulub impactor delivers approximately one septillion 
300 sextillion kilojoules of energy, more energy than 1 billion Hiroshima atomic bombs. The kinetic energy transferred by the asteroid to the soil, rock, and air excites the molecules to temperatures far hotter than the surface of the sun. The heat rips electrons from atoms, ionizing the air into an expanding fireball of plasma in excess of 10,000 degrees, turbocharged with vaporized rock that is blasted out at hypersonic speeds. The heated, rapidly expanding air and near instantaneous conversion of Earth to gas, combined with the impact shockwave itself, forms a massive blast wave of pressure expanding outward at more than 1600 kilometers per hour. If this asteroid hit the same spot today, the blast wave would vaporize you in Texas, deafen you in New York, and blow out glass windows in Buenos Aires. The Chicxulub impactor rings Earth like a bell. Waves in Earth's crust radiate away from the impact zone at 4 kilometers per second. These waves then trigger fault-slipping earthquakes across the continents. If you were on the other side of the world, you would feel the ground shaking 30 minutes after impact. The impact triggers tsunamis as high as skyscrapers. The first of them hit Gulf coastlines within the hour. Waves ranging from 600 feet to perhaps as tall as 1,000 feet smash into what is now Mexico and the southern United States and flood tens of miles inland. The waves temporarily reverse the flow of rivers, rushing up riverbeds like 34-foot tidal bores. Tsunamis smash into the eastern coast of the United States in six hours after impact, max out at 600-foot high walls of water that slam into Europe Africa, and the Mediterranean coasts. Within 15 hours of impact, waves arrive on every coastline on the planet. Depending on local topography, the ocean sweeps away anything in its path and sucks it back into the sea when the waters finally retreat. It already sounds like Armageddon, but even more disasters are on their way. When the big rock strikes, its splash accounts for 25 trillion tons of Earth that it launches on ballistic trajectories, some at speeds that exceed Earth's escape velocity. These rocks exited Earth's gravitational pull to either orbit the Sun, and some of this material probably reached the Moon. But the majority of ejected debris returned back to Earth within the hour. These glass-like chunks, called tektites, some as large as buses, but most the size of marbles, pelt the Earth at speeds ranging from 160 to 320 kilometers per hour in lethal quantities. Regardless of where any remaining dinosaurs were on Earth, they were hit with this fiery hailstorm. But these glass bullets didn't need to hit the dinosaurs to be fatal. As these tektites fall, their friction with the atmosphere emits through thermal radiation to set fires across the planet. By some estimates, the combined heat of the returning embers heats the planet to the equivalent of an oven set to broil. Most of the world's trees burn, which is perhaps why the only bird species that survives the impact are those that nest on the ground. Of the few larger land animals to avoid extinction, nearly all have some means of escaping the heat. They either could burrow like small mammals, snakes, and lizards, or escape into water like crocodiles or turtles. Even if the poor dinosaurs were on the other side of the world, they would have needed to find protection from the initial heat blast. In the final piece of terrible luck for the dinosaurs, Chicxulub happens to strike an area rich in oil and sulfur. The impact ejects 100 billion tons of vaporized sulfur and 30,000 quadrillion gallons of water into the atmosphere, which then condenses into massive storm clouds and falls back as torrents of acid rain that acidified the oceans. In the higher latitudes, continental-wide snowstorms deposited tens of feet of snow per day. But the global deluge doesn't last long because in addition to water, Chicxulub vaporizes and explosively ejects 150 football stadiums worth of oil from the Yucatan bedrock. This oil condenses in the stratosphere as a black sooty layer covering the earth like a coat of black paint. Unlike the sulfur and wildfire smoke, the carbon circulates high above the cloud layer stopping it from raining back down. And that becomes another big problem. The soot layer remains in the atmosphere, reducing the amount of sunlight that reaches Earth's surface by 90% for at least 2-3 to three years. The initial oven-like heat brought on by the returning tektites is followed by a deep and long-lasting freeze. Global temperatures drop by an average of almost 50 degrees. The only place on Earth to avoid this deep freeze are Madagascar, India, and Indonesia, which were tropical islands during this time. 
in the global chill, evaporation almost ceases, dropping rainfall by 80%. Nearly every spot on Earth outside these tropical islands dries into a desert. Where did this giant rock come from, and is there another one headed for us? Researchers using a supercomputer studied asteroid evolution using data from known asteroids. The two-member team of Avi Loeb and Amir Siraj suggested that Chicxulub asteroid likely originated from the Oort cloud, a sphere of debris at the edge of the solar system. It could have been a much larger comet that was pushed off course by Jupiter's gravitational field and sent close to the Sun where it broke into several pieces. These fragments can cross the Earth's orbit and hit the planet once every 250 to 730 million years. Judging from the study, it's not a matter of if we could be hit by another giant rock from outer space, but when. On Saturday, December 11, 2021, NASA revealed that a 330 meter long asteroid named 4660 Nearest screamed past Earth around 3.8 million kilometers at a speed of 6.5 kilometers per second. Now, that might not sound like a near miss, but wait till you hear this. Astronomers warned that even the slightest deviation in its orbit could send it on a collision course with Earth in its future. Don't believe us? Well, mark your calendars for February 14th, 2060, the day when this potentially hazardous space rock will come within a mere 1.1 million kilometers of our dear planet. That's right, Valentine's Day might not be so romantic after all. So, you better start stocking up on those flowers and getting your proposals ready well in advance, just in case. But before you dismiss this as just another doomsday theory, remember the Chelyabinsk explosion in Russia in 2013? That asteroid was only a measly 20 meters in size and look at the destruction it caused. Embrace yourself for the bad news, we don't have a known way to defend ourselves from a colossal space rock hurtling towards us at insane speeds. However, NASA's DART mission is about to take the universe by storm. You won't believe what they're up to. Picture this, a spacecraft autonomously navigating through space and then intentionally colliding with an asteroid. And not just any asteroid, mind you, but one that's headed straight for our beloved planet Earth. Talk about a real-life superhero. This spacecraft, aptly named DART, is on a mission to save the day by hitting the asteroid moonlet, Dimorphos, that orbits the larger asteroid, Didymos. And when I say hit, I mean really hit it, with a kinetic impact that could push the asteroid off course and away from our planet. But don't get too excited just yet. We're talking about a minuscule change in speed. We're talking less than 1%. Sure, it might not sound like much, but it could be the difference between life and death for us Earthlings. And let's be real, if a world-ending asteroid came our way, it would take more than just a small spacecraft to save us. We're talking nuclear weapons, like in the blockbuster hit Armageddon. But hey, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. What do you guys think? Do you have any out-of-the-box ideas on how we can save the world from an asteroid apocalypse? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and who knows, you might just become famous and help save the world. Let us know what you think, and make sure to stay tuned here for more exciting stuff happening in our universe. Thanks for watching, and subscribe for more.